I cannot believe that it's been 20 years. It's gone by like a wind. It seems absurd that we've been here 20 years. That is actually a pretty startling statistic. It means I'm getting old. It's easy to work for a place that you love. This is definitely home. This is a place where I can live a life of the mind, but still be deeply connected to my students. Working at Georgetown gives me as much nourishment as I feel that I give Georgetown. I've loved working with the law students who are gonna go out and do public interest work. It's really inspiring for me to see. I've been focused on this issue of peace in Columbia now for over 35 years. And what's extraordinary is they're now on the verge of negotiating peace. What I've advocated all these years, decades later, is coming to be, and that's quite satisfying. And I have the opportunity to review applications of students coming from all over the world who express a sincere interest in coming to Georgetown. You have the opportunity to really, you know, sometimes see that diamond in the rough or that person with a really interesting story who you think, wow, this is somebody who would be a wonderful Georgetown student. That's a, that's a great day. There are questions that I want to answer uh, about the world out there. When I can frame a question and when my caterpillars or my butterflies or my plants answer that question for me. And many experiments are new, so we are like a treasure hunter in a treasure pit. Georgetown provides a uh, environment that's a collegial and also warm and tolerate if you make mistakes. So these are most important environment for a scientist. There's this joy of when you make a new discovery. No one else has done or seen what you have done. And then when those elements finally come together and you can see how the story has evolved, that's the most exciting, that's the most thrilling. This in carbohydrate and protein metabolism. I love so the integration that of that teaching that and research. Isn't that evolutionally quite a bad idea? Uh, sensor substitution device. You are constantly surrounded by students. And that makes a huge difference because students challenge you and they ask you questions. There are these uh, regions in the brain that... Just as a curious question, have they seen these... And you have to explain out? things in like, very different terms than how you talk to your peers. So if I make a discovery, it's thanks to them as much as if they learn something, it's thanks to me. I look at the year as this proposal that I'm putting forward. And I'm going to take them on a path. And if they will go through this path with me, when they come out on the other end, they will have grown up. They will have learned how to solve problems. I feel so fortunate to have such great students at Georgetown and to be able to engage them in serious, important, intellectual, but also just conversations about life. In which A lot of Georgetown undergraduate students aren't always the happiest about having to take two philosophy courses. Having to teach to an audience to try to you know, make it clear to them what the value of your discipline is does, uh, yeah, does, does inspire one you know, to put your uh, your discipline's best foot forward. No, pleasure is not the ultimate. There will always be a few in the batch of evaluations that said, I came in prepared to hate philosophy, and I didn't, and that's a wonderful thing. I want them to think about plants not just as a green backdrop to their regular lives, but as the organisms that provide all of the food and all of the oxygen on the planet. They're learning a language, but the language is almost a tool to learn everything else around them. Pas très clair, cette histoire. I try to make them understand how a sentence is built, and a sentence is like a human body. You have to have a heart 
which is a verb. You need to have a brain, which is the subject dictating what the heart is going to do. When you see the students click, so when there's uh, an understanding in their eyes, when they get motivated, when they're doing stuff on their own, and they're racing ahead of you. Right. And so what I want That's to do is... That's a moment you can, you that you can isolate. Right. It's something that both you and the student recognize. And there's a great feeling that comes with that. Sometimes these classes become unexpectedly relevant. Terrorism versus Islam in Russian 19th century literature. I see that my students come out of that class strengthened, kinder. When you work with a student, if it's a student that has struggled and that you've had an impact on that student, and you see that student walk across commencement stage, and that is truly just a great experience. In fact, there are times at graduation where I sit there and look at them and wish that I was in line with them going out to launch my career. They really have been what has made this job for me. They, they will go out and do great stuff, and I hope to play a small part in guiding them in a particular direction that will help the, the world be a better place. After taking public service leave from Georgetown for three years to the work at the White House, many of my colleagues thought I would not come back. For me, it was never a choice. I always knew that Georgetown was my home. I'm going to continue to be engaged in the world, and I'm going to do as I've always done, bring that all back to Georgetown. I think that my job in undergraduate admissions is something that I could do forever. So, you know, 20 years just seems like a drop in what could be a very long career at Georgetown. I want to end my career at Georgetown. There's no question about it. I can't imagine doing anything else that would make me as fulfilled as what I've been doing for the last 20 years. When you have been at Georgetown for 20 years and participated and grown, it's very hard to see your life without Georgetown.